Welcome. Uh, today we're talking about Dragon Ball Z, the anime. I'm not a huge anime guy, but I would like to get into it more. It's kind of one of my big nerd blind spots. I've seen like a few animes, but not that many. Uh, I, I watched all of Vinland Saga. I thought that was really great. I loved that. Um, I've seen like, you know, some of the Pokemon anime from when I was a kid and like a few things here and there. I watched like the first season of Attack on Titan when that first came out. But, like, it's kind of just one of those things that I don't really know that much about, but I would like to know more of. Because also, I don't know, it's new and different, and that's that's always cool. Like, I need to, I, I also need to get, like, into more um, of uh, the, like, Studio Studio Ghibli movies. I've seen, like, a couple of them, and they were, the ones I saw were pretty good, and I'd like to see more. But anyways, so whatever. Anyways, the point is, I'm jumping right into Dragon Ball Z. Why that one? Because, I don't know, it looked cool. Dragon Ball Z is one of the ones that I feel like gets like referenced a lot by people that talk about anime. And just like pop culture in, in general. It's like a it's like a hugely popular franchise. So I want to like be able to like understand and get the references when people say like, oh, it's like that part in Dragon Ball when this happened or whatever. And I want to be like, yeah. It is like that. <laughs> I'm starting with uh, Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball Z, as it's known here in Canada. Skipping uh, Dragon Ball, no letters, um, which I'm sure certain fans will, will say is the wrong way to do it. I'm also doing the dubbed version, the dubbed English version, not the subtitles. Usually I like the subtitles in anime because I feel like the Jap... It, uh, it just, you get closer to the original kind of performance and the original intent of the creators with the with the Japanese performance and it's kind of hard to recapture that well with 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 English it just like there's a little bit of a, 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 a translation barrier but I'm going with the dubbed for this one in contrast to how I usually watch anime uh well, why am I doing that good question um I think just I feel like um this is a this is an anime that a lot of people grew up with and was one of the first ones to make it to the west and so I kind of want to get a as as close to an experience as I can recreate to someone uh, growing up with this anime specifically, and to see if if there's if I can like understand and uh, relate to like why this one specifically became super popular. So so far, I've seen the first five episodes, and I might uh, do another one of these, checking in after I finish the next five. We'll see how often I do this. I don't know. We're 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 we're, we're going as we go. And so far, uh, I think it's pretty good. I'm 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 liking it. The first episode was like I was like not really into Goku's son Gohan. Hopefully I get these names right. Um was like really fucking annoying in that one and I'm like, "Oh man, is this going to be is there going to be a lot of this?" But luckily things pick up a lot in the next one and then the next few episodes is basically just uh so yeah, I I'll this there might be minor there might be some I'm I'm going to talk spoilers for Dragon Ball Z. I don't know who's watching this, if you've never seen it or whatever, but there's only the first five episodes and it's the first kind of like chapter-ish of this arc. I don't know how long the arc is, but I'm guessing it's it's pretty long. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going to watch all of this anime either, but I'm definitely going to give it a look like a couple seasons. We're going to get through at least, because um, there's a lot of episodes of this. We're, I'm, you know, we're gonna keep going and see how I see what see what I think, um, but definitely at least whatever the first arc is, I think it's the Saiyan saga. Is that right? I know some things about Dragon Ball, but it's mostly just from like pop culture stuff. It's like I know you. There's a Kamehameha. I saw he did that in one of these episodes, and I was like, oh, I know what that is. So there's like some stuff I know about, but I don't uh, have full context for. So that's what I'm trying to do is get more context for. Some of the like vague stuff I know about Dragon Ball. So yeah, the the, ba the basic plot of this one of this little of these first five episodes is that uh, this dude shows up from space, um, and he's a Saiyan. 
from the planet Vegeta, which I thought Vegeta was a guy. Maybe he's also a guy, but the, I guess that's the name of the planet. I don't know if this is different in the dub or whatever, or if it's different in the original, but I'm sure I'll learn more as we go. I thought the guy who showed up was Vegeta, but I don't think he had a different name, so it's probably not him. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah, willing to guess that that's probably not Vegeta. I don't, apparently I don't know what Vegeta looks like, so it, uh, I don't know, obviously I don't know what, what is going on yet. Anyways, this dude shows up and he's like, Goku, I'm gonna fight you, be- or no, he doesn't want to fight him, he's like, I'm gonna rec- hey, I, what's going on, you were sent here to this planet to like, take it over, and you didn't do that, you just been like, hanging out, what gives? So we find out that Goku is also a Saiyan, also an alien, and he was sent to Earth, or I, or... I think it's supposed, to, it's like kind of Earth, but there's like magic and spaceships and stuff. So it's like a little bit different from regular Earth. And he was sent to Earth to like conquer it as a, as a baby. So it's like Superman, but if Superman was like intentionally sent as, as a conqueror and not just, maybe we can get our, it's not just like a last hope of like, eh, maybe we can save our son, even though our planet's going to die. So it's a little bit invincible as well, which is interesting. I definitely see the like Superman comparisons. There was a lot of debate about like who would win a fight, Superman or Goku. Yeah, I get it. Like he, he has a very similar origin, but instead of conquering the earth when he was a little baby, he was dropped on his head and then forgot what his mission was. <laughs> and so he was just raised as like a guy. A guy who's obviously, you know, super powerful or whatever, too. So then this uh, other Saiyan shows up and he's like, how come you didn't conquer Earth? And he's like, because, no. (laughs) So then they have a fight. Well, first this bat, I forget his name, but he captures um, Goku's son, Gohan, because he's also a Saiyan. And he's like, you'll be helpful in us conquering the universe or whatever. Or I guess they, what, what was it they say? They, 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 and it's not like exactly conquering because they just, they just wipe out everyone. They just kill everyone on the planet and then I guess sell the planets to like other galactic forces or something. So it's like kind of darker than, than just like wanting to conquer because they're just like, no, we're just doing a genocide. That's our goal. So this guy's like, he wants to recruit Goku. So the, but eventually like a fight ends up happening. But this guy is like seemingly way power, more, more stronger than Goku. So Goku has to team up with Piccolo, a green, I guess he's also an alien, I think. I don't know. I assume he's from the original Dragon Ball series. I've heard of Piccolo, and I and he looks familiar. I've seen this character before. So already we're getting to like the the one of the tropes that I've heard a lot about, which is that like uh, throughout the series, when they introduce like a new villain, they often Goku all often has to team up with a previous villain in order to like stand a chance against that other the new the new villain the new threat. And uh, I love that trope. I think it's super fun. They do it in like Fast and Furious all the time, and it's great. So already I'm like, this is cool. I'm I'm into this. I don't even know who Piccolo is, but I'm I'm down. And I like he, like he's just like, I like that he's like kind of reluctant. He's like, we're only, I'm only doing this because I actually want to conquer the Earth. So if this guy does instead, then like that gets in my in the way of my plan. So like I I'm I'm not I'm gonna help you, Goku, but I'm not gonna be happy about it. And and, and I like that dynamic. I think it's fun. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we get a lot of the, like stuff that I've heard about the show, where you know, fight scenes that last multiple episodes. Yeah, the la- the this like what is basically just one fight scene ends up lasting, I think, three whole episodes, pretty much. And a lot of that is dialogue, which I appreciate. It's not just them punching the whole time. It's more interesting than that. It's the characters relating to each other and discussing their different like motivations and stuff for why they want to fight and why, what's going on, all that stuff. And there's also a lot of like characters powering up specific attacks, which they have to like charge, which takes a long time. There's a lot of uh, him checking his uh, scouter for different power levels, which seem to vary like wildly because at the like start of this he's like oh goku you're only a level 300 power or whatever you're not big uh, that big of a threat and then by the end of it he's like wow he's already over a thousand power level he's he's more dangerous than i thought so i don't know how the power levels work but it seems to be it's it seems to kind of vary depending on 
what's going on at the time. And the animation isn't uh, isn't perfect. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of like tricks that I'm familiar with. Some anime tricks where they have to have a lot of sequences that are very limited animation characters mostly standing still and talking because they're saving the budget and the time for like moments where we do get like crazy fast paced action which does happen here as well and i i dig it i dig this uh this this style of of fighting where the characters are like moving so fast that like you the audience can't tell really what's happening but i kind of like it it really kind of actually helps to illustrate how like powerful how crazy powerful these characters are that like you can't even comprehend how fast they're moving i i like it it's i think it's cool yeah again stuff that like they kind of end up using a little bit in this kind of style of like action that they kind of end up using in like man of steel and that kind of stuff and the other thing that i thought was interesting was i'm watching superman and lois right now which is really good it's just a really good superman show um, but it's interesting because it's actually very, this first arc is actually very similar to the plot of the first season of Superman and Lois, where Superman has kids, one of them has powers, and uh, this dude from Krypton shows up and is like trying to recruit Superman to help him conquer the Earth. And also he's like kind of interested in his son maybe because his son also has powers. And it's like that's literally just this arc of Dragon Ball right now. <laughs> but of course, you know, Dragon Ball was clearly influenced from Superman. And now Dragon Ball's also kind of influencing various Superman things. I think that's kind of how the how the turntables. So the end of episode five, the like sort of big cliffhanger and the end of this like little first chapter. Again, spoilers, but uh, what happens is, is Piccolo has to, like, is like charging up this laser blast move and Goku like grapples the other bad evil Saiyan and grapples him to like hold him in place so Piccolo can get this attack off on him and the bad guy's like Goku you're gonna probably die also and Goku's like if that's what it takes to protect my son then that's okay with me and uh yeah that Piccolo shoots his laser and it kills both of them uh, it kills the, the bad guy Saiyan and it kills Goku. He dies. <laughs> oh, which I was not expecting him to die in episode five of the show, but I'm kind of very intrigued by it. Now, already they've set up uh, that there is a way for Goku to come back to life, which is the Dragon Balls from the title. Um, and I have heard of these as well. I, I know that the, I knew th- I knew I knew that there were physical Dragon Balls in the show Dragon Ball. I knew that much. Um and it seems like it's kind of, well, my thought was it was kind of more like the Infinity Stones or like the Horcruxes or something where like, I thought that would be like the main plot of the whole series is just trying to find all these things. And it maybe kind of is, but it seems, but from what they've said, they've already used, found them all and used them multiple times. So apparently it's not that hard to get them all. Again, this is, this is what I, this is, this is, this is what I get for skipping a whole ass show. I'm sure some fans will be mad at me for doing that. I don't care. <laughs> I'll do what I want. Anyway, so if you get all seven of the Dragon Balls, you meet this dragon and he grants you a wish. And it could be whatever. You can just wish for anything. So pretty powerful stuff. So they establish like, well, okay, well now Goku's friends are going to try to get all the Dragon Balls and wish him back to life. But I actually, I actually like um, at least the way they've established this here is um, because they've, they've done that before, apparently, with one of Goku's friends. They had to wish back to life at one point. But they established that you can only wish for... You, can, you can't wish for the same thing more than once. So I actually, I think this is actually really interesting. Because it means that we've killed off our main character. But we've also set up that there's a way for him to come back to life. And maybe it's not even that hard to do. But also, we've set up that if they do that... They can only do that one more time. So if he dies a second time, uh, it might be in more trouble there. So somehow they've killed off their main character, but established that actually we can bring him back super easily, barely an inconvenience. And somehow there are still stakes and uh, consequences. Because the other thing that happens is that we find out from this bad guy, Saiyan, I forget his name, that there are two other Saiyans um out in the universe somewhere and they're listening in on their whole conversation so he hears about so the other two sands hear about this planet earth where their buddy died 
And also, it has this has these seven Dragon Balls that if you get them, you can wish for whatever you want. So they're like, okay, well, that seems like a pretty good deal. So now they're on their way to Earth. And Goku could barely defeat one of these guys with the help of uh, the bad guy. The former bad guy who I don't know if he's going to continue to be bad or not, but probably we'll find I'll find out, I guess. So they could bring back Goku, but also there's this other threat that's going to be more bigger, more of a bigger challenge. And also Goku, if they do resurrect Goku, he can't come back to that same way again. Now, this is a universe with like aliens and monsters and and uh, magic and and rope and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I'm I'm assuming there's probably other ways that they could, you know, I'm sure there's other stuff in this universe that could potentially, they could potentially bring characters back to life or whatever. You know, it's a fantasy sci-fi world, so any number of things could happen, and I'm pretty early on in the show, so I don't know the extent of what exists in this universe. I'm impressed with, like, that series of events that they <laughs> killed off a main character, established that it's definitely possible to bring him back, but there still feels like there's stakes. It still feels like there are consequences. And I'm like invested and curious to see what's going to happen next. And all in all in five episodes. So like, yeah, I, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. I also love the, uh, the like narration. That's like, what's going to happen next time. And I, it sounds like it, I'm pretty sure it's the same guy who voices Kaiba in Yu-Gi-Oh. I watched a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh. As a kid, that's another anime I know a little bit about. And he's got a great voice, and he's just like, he seems like it's, 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 it's like the perfect, like, oh no, th th now there's two new Saiyans coming to Earth. Are they gonna get the Dragon Balls? Are they gonna be able to resurrect Goku in time? What's gonna happen? Uh, and find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. It's great. I love it. I love it. It's it's awesome. So so yeah, I'm I'm digging it so far. That's the first five episodes. So far, I'm definitely I definitely can can see like like if I watched this as a kid, I would be way into it, and I I don't I totally get like why it has uh the following that it does for sure. So yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna keep keep watch a bit more. Maybe I'll do some more of these. Let me know in the comments. Have you seen Dragon Balls? What are some other animes I should watch? All this and more next time on whatever I end up feeling like doing next time. Bye-bye.